Hey guys, the name is Chris Parocci. Welcome to my channel. This is my guitar tweaks series and I am modifying my good old Squire five string P bass. Uh, this is the sixth episode. So if you want to check out all the previous episodes, um, I have them linked in the description box under this video. And also check out Andy Ferris's channel. His, uh, his channel is called The Guitar Geek and he removed the finish uh, the original finish um, on the body to sort of um, push me into finally refinishing and modifying my bass. In the previous episode, in the fifth one, I um, finished uh, the body, I finished the three-tone sunburst and then uh, white primer shell pink clear coat on top which was a weather checking clear coat so um, it has some massive weather checking going on. It's not weather checking, it's more like a flood survivor base. Let's peel off the masking tape. I sort of made sure to have some sort of a contour here going on, as you can tell. Like I didn't want to have a straight line, you know, I wanted to have like sort of something that I would want to have anyhow and what I can work on later on. Okay, it looks pretty damn good, to me at least. <laughs> oh, nice. My relicking just started. <laughs> the masking tape peeled off the, uh, the black. That is so satisfying. It looks sick. I hope I'm not the only one who see this this way. I mean, obviously there's, there's a lot to do here <laughs> to make it look, you know, like properly finished and everything. But this, as it is right now, is already really, really satisfying to look at because I can imagine how awesome this will look later on. <laughs> Come on! Nice! Okay, let's uh, check out the back. Oh man, <laughs> that looks wild, really, with this crazy crackles on it, together with the, uh, the sunburst. Let's stain the neck. I just have to mask down the edges of the fretboard because I don't want to stain the rosewood. Put on a few drops of water, that's also important before you stain, that um, afterwards the stain gets soaked in the same way everywhere. By now you probably realize that like 80% is sanding whenever you refinish an instrument or just do something with it. It's... you need patience. I let this baby dry, looks pretty good. And uh, as soon as it's dry, I can tell if I want to apply a second, um, you know, layer. This is called a card scraper or just a scraper. And with that, you can actually pull off, you know, wood or finish, whatever you wish to do. The biggest problem in many cases with relicking relic jobs is that people don't take care of all these scratches which make it so obvious that you were just scratching on your um, finish. Okay, that's a little too pointy. Mm. 
most of the relicking or aging on this part comes from rubbing the finish. You know, you, you might have, a, I don't know, some stuff in your arm, your watch, something that scratches it, sure. But mostly it's just gonna be your jacket, your skin, your whatever, that's sort of rubbing this part, you know, stupidly long until finish is gone. When you're done with a part like this, you, ob you obviously scratched the lacquer around it, so uh, that needs to be taken care of. I will go over the back of the neck again with stain. That's looking good. Now let's check the back. These crazy crackles are so wide that it makes sense to clean up the middle. I'm hoping if I make that clean, you can see the sunburst way nicer inside the crackles. I'm still not 100% happy with uh, this part. I guess it makes a lot more sense to smoothen this, uh, this region out. I am way happier with this part, so uh, it's time to buff it up again because I obviously, obviously scratched the surface here. I'm happy with that and uh, I will move on and uh, finish up the relicking. People keep on asking me, is it possible to relic poly finished bodies, you know, guitars, basses, whatever. And um, my answer is always the same, poly will not break that nicely because it's way too strong so it's it's not supposed to relic and age so it will not look very natural for that reason already the second reason is most poly finished guitars or braces are finished so thick that it's it's not possible to do what i'm doing right now you know i just uh, grab the scraper and um, and use the edge to actually peel off and you know, some, some nitro and, and make it look like it's sort of crackling, you know, falling apart. That's something that happens to nitro and doesn't happen to poly.
So the neck is looking good. I stained it with uh, walnut last time, which turned out very nice. Still, I will want to oil it with this Sandberg uh, fingerboard oil, which is our pure natural oil. And also, I have some ash here. That is nice to make wood look a little more sort of gray. Mix it with some oil and see what happens. Okay, here goes nothing. Ah, yeah. So if I put it on, I have to dry it off immediately, otherwise it will get too dark. I will have to take care of all the metal parts, all the hardware. Um, this is a chrome finished bridge and my tuner is also chrome, uh, which is not good because chrome doesn't age very nicely. But there was no nickel option here for some reason. I was not a being able to order one. Ferric chloride. So this is a pretty aggressive chemical. Don't breathe it in. Don't ever touch it. And especially never, you know, put it in your eyes or mouth or whatever. Don't swallow it. It's, uh, it's bad. It looks scratchier. <laughs> Do the same thing with all the other metal parts. Ferric chloride. This is where I will put all the metal parts in first. Then, uh, after a couple of minutes, I will put them in water just to wash that thing off. I'm done with uh, radicking the metal parts, which went way better than I thought. This is the bridge, the base plate of the bridge. It looks messed up, which is good. <laughs> it looks really old, like properly old. The screws, that was obvious that they get nice and rusty. Of course, the, um, the saddles, I didn't do much on the saddles. And it's all right because these touch the string, so I really don't want them to cause you know string breaking issues and anything and the machine heads i i've put them on the headstock already because i just couldn't resist so uh they look you know sort of scratched which is not something i would call an awesome relicking but these uh sort of i don't know copper reddish kind of uh, stripes will turn into rust anyhow a little bit more so um they'll be fine the last thing to do in terms of relicking is just to make sure that I'm you know sort of happy with all the um, scratches and whatever so I just go over this part a little bit uh, reveal a little more of the wood because I think it looks a bit weird that uh, the pin goes way back um, and there's barely any wood here so um, I just did it because I wanted the sunburst to come through so it was more of an aesthetic decision um, than a, a sort of a realistic radicking. All right, it's time to stain the wood. I'm gonna be using the same light walnut color stain I used on the back of the neck. Wow. If it only stayed exactly like this, I'd love it immediately. The only problem is that right now it's wet. That's why it's so dark. Okay, it's better using gloves when you stain. Okay. 
All right, that needs to dry, but in the meantime, I can explain what's up with these holes. I had to re-drill the holes for the new bridge because the position of the screws was totally different than on the original Squire bridge. I didn't want to use the old one uh, just for obvious reasons. I wanted to have a high quality bridge. I had to figure out where to put it, obviously. I mean, uh, it's not that simple. You have to be aware of a number of things. First of all, you have to have the right scale length, obviously. So uh, what I did is I put on the first uh, string, the G string, and uh, put it to like a, a good position. I had the, the, the saddle here somewhere just to have some space to move to the front too, but mainly to the back. Yeah, because all the rest will go further away from the neck and all the other saddles for the other uh, strings. And measured the scale length, which is the normal fender base scale length and marked the position of the bridge. I measured the distance between the routing here and here and obviously uh, the distance to the back of the body here and here. One more thing to consider whenever you try to put on a new bridge on a guitar or a bass, uh, the neck, you know, you have to position it right in the center. For that, I had to put in the neck and um, had to use a ruler with which you follow both um, sides of the neck and make sure that the bridge sits right in the middle. What a crazy day. I am officially finished with Radiking 2. That leaves only a couple of more things to do, um, which is gonna be the pig guard. I'm pretty sure there will gonna be a couple of hate comments in the comment section because many people get really aggressive when it comes to relicking something. I don't see relicking as faking because it's always overdone. I see relicking as a, a, a visual thing. It's just something you find visually pleasing or not, which is also cool. You know, it's just, you know, I mean, come on, the base is pink, that's already like, you know, 50-50, you love it, you hate it. Next episode is gonna be the last episode, which is gonna be assembly, final, you know, adjustments and playing. You will get to hear this beast and I'll get to play it, which is so cool. All right, let me know what you think. Meet you down in the comment section. Ring the bell, hit the subscribe button. See you next time. Looking forward to that one.